the lady herself, Norma Miller. Norma, let me ask you some questions. This is the United Kingdom. We're excited to have you in London. It's a short European tour, only yes. Munich, Berlin and London. So right. we feel very lucky to be one of these cities. But did you remember that I brought the Lindy Hop? That was my question. Who brought Lindy Hop to the United Kingdom? I did. <laughs> what year was that? 35 and exhibited wow. a dance called the Lindy Hop. Thank you. Now, Norma, we move on a few years, and uh, obviously I was in Australia at the time, but a very significant group were called the Jiving Lindy Hoppers. So tell me about you and the Jiving Lindy Hoppers. Now, that is, is that, where, are you the, where are the Jiving Lindy Hoppers? That's one. This was the group that came to America to work with Frankie and I. And they were called the Jive and Lindy Hoppers. And I used to say, well, why do y'all say Jive? Do you know what Jive means? <laughs> the British took the word Jive to mean uh, equivalent to jazz. But you say, listen, Jive means BS. <laughs> That's why we call it Jive. And not only that, they created a dance called the Jive. I said, That's it. The dance is BS. It wasn't where the conversation was supposed to go, guys. <laughs> with the Savoy Ballroom? Well, I used to live in back of the ballroom. And you know, I was with, you know how kids are, we used to be able to look in the windows and watch the people dance, because in those days there was no such thing as air conditioning, so these windows was wide open, so when the band would play, you could sit out there and dance to whatever they were playing. So my life began as a dancer, listening to the music that came out of the Savoy. And it was a natural thing for me because at the time came when there was a man who was the most famous dancer in the ballroom, saw me cavorting in front of the Savoy, which I always did. I used to get chased away all the time. <laughs> and he said, come on up, I want to take you, I want you to dance with me. And this was the famous, a man called 
twist mouth George. He had a mouth that was on the side of his face. You know, it was the, the, the thing called, he had palsy. But in those days, they didn't have a name for it. And that was why his mouth was twisted. But boy, his feet could twist and he could dance. And I danced with the great twist mouth George at 12 years old. And that was the first time I went into the ballroom. Now and tell us about the ballroom, because... Uh... It was the greatest, it was like this street. But it, think of a place exactly like this, but twice the size. Just like this, same that this would be the those guys and that would be the bandstand. And the floor went all the way twice as long, and this it was a block long. And it was the most famous dance place in the world, and it was the first place where black people could go without being prohibited, stopped at the door. And it was a place in the first place in the history of the world that the place was integrated. You saw white people, black people, Asian people, Everybody was at the Zubar Ballroom. And they would have tried to bring the process of segregation to New York. They couldn't do that at the Zubar Ballroom. In the Zubar Ballroom, you saw there's a, there's a nice black face over there. You don't see too many of them every once in a while. But there's another black face over there. And you always see a whole lot of Asians. But that's what made them. Listen, you're all part of it. See that? You like to swing? You, we had one thing in common. We heard the music. We heard the greatest sound in the world. And when you hear a great sound, you respond to that sound. And when you see you dancing on the floor, it means you're listening, you're hearing. And that's what we've spread around the world. And oh, how many years later? How, what generation is this? This is the grandkids. Great, 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 great. <laughs> And they're doing, what are they listening to the same music that yeah. I, and I, today I am 95 and I'm there. you're doing the same steps I do. Norma, let me ask uh, a really interesting anecdote that you told me on the train today. That I was asking uh, Norma about the Hells of Poppin' clip, which we've all watched thousands of times. Mm -hmm. But when you filmed that, you didn't actually get to see it for 16 years. No, nope. well, tell see, us about that. We we did it in 1941. We left immediately for Rio de Janeiro. So now when we left for Rio de Janeiro, Pearl Harbor came in. And maybe you want to know problems, be out of the country when it hits the fan. <laughs> and there it was. So who was thinking about a movie clip or anything? I think 1956, here come Ernie Smith, showed films on black dancers and things. And there I saw for the first time Elsa Poppins. I hadn't seen it before. And this is what you saw. This is what started, what became a revival. Because I hadn't done no Lindy Hop in 40 years. And there I am looking at what we did in 1941. But see, the war came, the guys, our, all our guys was drafted, so we had no dancing partners. So I created the Norma Miller Dancers. So you kept dancing. Oh, I never stopped. I never stopped. I didn't know nothing else to do. I never had a job. Me neither. I never had a job. Nobody, I never could do nothing where people would pay me. <laughs> Only thing I got paid for was dancing. Mm -hmm. So consequently, I continued the dancing. Yeah. And out of the Norman Miller dancers came the jazz men, which was the just guys. And that was my career up until I went with the, the, into the comedy field. But uh, you find a way to make a living when you do this kind of work. And I have been doing this kind of work for 70 years. I danced for 70 years in the past 15 years. Now I'm only working with people like Jenny and, and I'm hoping the wonderful Chester Whitmore thinks. They're the ones that's gonna step up and keep this at a professional level. You keep it at a social level, which is wonderful. We have to keep it at a professional level so that we can get paid for it. Because y'all ain't getting paid for it, y'all. Y'all got a hobby. <laughs> no. Now, <laughs> I noticed your eyes light up today when we were talking about some of the old musicians. Tell us about Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Count Basie. Who did you love? What were they like? Were oh. they nice people? Could they swing? I were, oh, God. Did they swear they? a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 But listen, Duke Ellington. Jump for Joy. I did Jump for Joy with Duke Ellington. 
Duke Ellington, the one that created the phrase, don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. That's Duke Ellington. Then I worked with the great Count Basie, old Basie. He was the one that used to tell his writers, write the music so that the dancers will stay on the floor. That's why any tune you hear of a Basie tune, you can dance to. And that has, up until today, you're still dancing to a Basie tune. And then there's the great Louis Armstrong, who created jazz, and jazz has taken over all of Europe. And that was my main man, that was Louis Armstrong. And I just wrote a new song for him called, they call him Louis, but he's pops to me. And that was the new song that's gonna be on the Broadway show, which Jessie doesn't know, but she's gonna help me with the Broadway show. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the Flim Flamingo in Vegas? Who did you work with then? Uh, that was the first black show that went in, it was the bass, with Basie. That was the first black show to go into uh, uh, Las Vegas. Like, you know, Las Vegas was segregated as Mississippi. But we broke that barrier. But we broke all the barriers that separated people. Wherever we went, we brought people together. And that was the reason what makes swing, dancing, and Lindy Hop so important. Because it's the one thing that nobody cares what you look like, who you are, what color you are. You can join us and just swing out like crazy. And that's what good swing is. And that's why I stay with the greatest dance in the world, which is is twist and turn and never stop. You can't top the Lindy Hop. Yeah. 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 Tell us, I don't know you might think this is a silly question, but tell us about you and Frankie and your relationship and friendship. Oh, well, Frankie and I were together 70 years. Can you imagine having a friend that long? See, we got along very well because we never saw each other. <laughs> we only come back together to dance together. We love to dance together, but we never were professional partners. Uh, uh, we were just a great person that he loved to dance, I loved to dance, and he was the one that gave all of us shiny stockings. Round of applause for that. <laughs> well done, amazing. That's rhythm. That's, and that's what Frankie was, the, he was the best at. That's why all of you learn from the people who taught Frankie. I mean, who Frankie taught. And it's down the line. Everybody loved what Frankie did. And was the last time we met was at uh, Frankie's, Frankie's 100, isn't it? 100. Now this was five years after a man had passed. You came together in New York. Five years. People don't care about anybody dying. Five, they, <laughs> one year they forget you. Yeah. They remembered and came on mass. And I looked and I said, what did this man have that touched people that they would come they don't even remember their own parents five years ago. <laughs> he had That's something. Amazing. So I said, the only thing I could do behind this, I wrote the President of the United States of America and said, Mr. President, this man did what all of the politicians in the world can't do. He brought people together in peace and love. And please, will y'all try awesome? Try what we are doing. And who knows, things might be different. Maybe we can stop all this craziness in the world, because when people swing, they're not unhappy. They are happy, and that's what we do. Now, Norma, I think we'll ask one more question, and then we'll have a dance, and then we'll have a, a few more questions later on, if that's Thank okay you. by you. Now, being Australian, you know I'm going to sneak a sport question in. Oh, God. Now, I heard somewhere that you actually know Jackie Robinson. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Well, maybe explain who Jack, does everyone know who Jackie Robinson? Uh, well, did you see the movie Forty Two? Yeah. You saw what? Well, it, it, uh, baseball, you had white a white team, and you had the Negro team. It was baseball, and you had great black baseball players, and you know you had great white baseball players, but somebody had to break that barrier, and that man was chosen to break that barrier to 
break that ceiling, that man was the great Jackie Robinson. And we were all in Miami together when, because Miami was where the farm team played in the winter. But when Jackie came down, he couldn't go on the beach with the white baseball players. He had to stay at the Hotel Mary Elizabeth where all of us were staying. So there we were. Jackie Robinson was with the baseball. Joe Lewis was retiring undefeated champion of the world in Miami. And there was Thurgood Marshall fighting for desegregation of the schools. And we were all in Miami at the Mary Elizabeth Hotel together. And I used to sit every night they'd come home. Jackie, after playing the day, he'd come and just sit on the couch. We all sit together. He worked for two years with that team. And no one spoke to him for two years. The only place he talked was when he came and sat with us. And he would just sit and do like this. We knew what he had to endure. But he did it. He did it and that broke the barrier of segregation in baseball. Thurgood Marshall broke the segregation in schools. It was, we were the people that caught, we broke every barrier and we did it with the dance. We did, we, we went into a place called Las Vegas and I had the Norma Miller dancers. Everywhere we went, we broke down doors so that people can come together like we're doing now, and that's what dancing did. And Lindy Hop was the one that joined white people and black people together. And they used to say, no, it looked like all white people was dancing. Well, white people needed something. We already had it. <laughs> and that was my <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.